Hey, everybody, we are back for another amazing episode of What Did We Just Watch? I am Dave. I'm here with my co-host, Brandon. Brandon, this is episode three of What Did We Just Watch? How was your brain after these two films? Uh, they definitely blew my mind because it's crazy because it's like, I can't believe that I missed these films, uh, <laughs> especially uh, the first one. So uh, you want to get the... Yeah, yeah. On that first I, I just got to say, like, I think you you just nailed it. Like my immediate thought after watching these two films is like, we're getting uh recommendations for films that are like spot on was exactly what the idea for this podcast like uh sub episodes are all about like this what did we just watch is all about getting some crazy movies that we might have missed and yes we did we got two of them but the first one is ghost house from 1988 which if you look up ghost house there's a few films named ghost house it's ghost house one word it's yeah. from 1988 and it's crazy as shit. So yeah, get because I, yeah, because that's why I had asked you. I said, is it the new one that just kind of came out that was kind of corny? You're like, no, it's the one from 1988. And I was like, all right, I didn't see that one. So I had to add that to the list. Yeah. So, yeah. It's uh streaming on Tubi. So um yeah, Tubi, right? Yes. Um, uh, it might be a few places, but definitely on Tubi. Yeah. Tubi, Peacock, probably. Yeah. So yeah. check it out. It's a great film. So, like you said, Ghost Ghost House Three, aka La Casa Three, and so like just well, going- no, it's just it's just Ghost House or La Casa Three, not Ghost House Three. So like oh yeah no 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 yeah, yeah La Casa Three yeah, and that's for a good reason that I will get to after Dave gives the whole rundown about the film. Yeah, as much as I can, because I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not even going to pretend I really understood anything about this film other than yeah, we're dealing with a ghost house. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 1988 Italian horror film from I guess he's sort of uh, an Italian legend uh, director legend, yeah. uh, Umberto Lenzi. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm familiar with him uh, from Hannibal, like ferox or however you say it nightmare city or um that's city of the living dead mm. which i freaking love that film so if people haven't watched that you got to watch uh city of the living dead uh but you know this is a pretty well-known italian director i think um at least as far as i go and it's about a house a deserted house where there's visions of a girl and a doll that basically terrorize anybody who enters the house and a ton of people enter this house for some reason one reason or another even though it's freaking totally decrepit and abandoned and cobwebs everywhere uh and yeah it's freaking nuts yeah so now you see we, we talked about it it's an italian film but it was shot in the united states and it shares the same house as one of the films that you're really like a huge fan of. What, what, yes, film? uh, The House by the Cemetery, yeah. with another Italian horror film. So, here's the really ironic part uh, this, these are two films made by Italian directors. Um, so we, but then it, they're both filmed in Situate, Massachusetts, yeah. And I, I actually was able to go to this house uh, a while back before I saw Ghost House, obviously, um, because I am a fan of House by the Cemetery and anything that Fulci does. And the house is is pretty like eerie. Uh, there's yeah. something very like it's it's not like a house that's lived in right now. I, I believe it's being used for like an arts council. Uh, but I was able to take some pretty sweet shots. It was a weekend. There was no one there. And if the house is different colors and it's been redone a little bit, but it for the most part looks exactly the same, like st- like structure wise, it looks exactly the same as it does in the film. Yeah, it's like maroon and yellow now, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I yep. think I think I've seen some pictures and like I think the back side of the house wasn't finished, so it still had that old paint from the from the film, and then it had the maroon and yellow in the front. So I'm not sure if that's finished yet. But yeah, like you were saying earlier, you know, you know towards like the end of the 1980s Italian um, genre films like started producing less material and 
independent companies began focusing on foreign markets um, that they would sell more, you know what I mean? Because they looked at it and said, oh, well, I think that this American film would kind of like sell a little bit more and do better on like home video or when it comes out in theaters. So that's why, you know, a lot of these films started to kind of market and do a different thing. And um, which one of our favorite films, Troll 2, you know what I mean? <laughs> how, how it was able to jump on to a whole different, you know, like, because the first, Troll 1 is a total different story. Yeah. And so Troll 2 was able to kind of take that film's name and then just try to create something else just off the buzz. And so this is what this film did. And so, um, which if you look at it when it's called La Casa, it's kind of fitting now because that we're reviewing this video with Evil Dead coming out this week. This film actually changed the name of Evil Dead in Italy yes. to La Casa. And Evil Dead was La Casa 2. And then they tried to sit there and pull a fast one and call this one La Casa 3. So yeah. it made people think that this was actually a sequel to Evil Dead. <laughs> so Yeah. yeah. So this this film was recommended by um josh gravel who on mm -hmm. uh instagram is weird underscore media underscore records and yeah. uh he recommended this film for this segment and he actually has a slip cover that mm. says like um it, like these italian ripoff slip covers for the films yeah. so they you know just and he had kind of shared some of that story with me it's mm -hmm. it's absolutely bonkers. That part you were saying earlier, though, about the Italian film industry, kind of like trying to reach uh, different markets. Is that kind of like how pieces is supposed to be set in like Harvard or something like that? Or isn't it yeah. supposed to be Massachusetts? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few films like that. So like if you catch you can catch that in a lot of films from the 80s. And so now it's like kind of cool because you can just sit there and just kind of laugh at it and just say, OK, well, you know, it was just, it was more for uh you know, promotional stuff to try to sell more. But yeah. I think at the end of the day, like first starting off, like I think that like going into this film, if you knew that you would say, oh, that's that's a cheesy ripoff. But this film wasn't that bad. You know what I mean? So you appreciate you appreciate the situations, everything that they have gone through to create this, to call it La Casa. Maybe we should just call this Evil Dead 3 and just get rid of Army of Darkness. What do you think? <laughs> oh, oh, shots are going to be fired on that one. Damn. Uh, I mean, I don't disagree necessarily, um, but yeah, <laughs> dude, when we say this, like this movie is, is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, please understand we are coming from the lens of like where we were at with deadly spawn Yeah, uh, where it's like, it's so freaking nuts and fun and crazy that it's enjoyable. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, in no way, shape or form does it make sense. Or is it like good in comparison to an actually good film? <laughs> but it's super enjoyable because it's like one of those classic, like so bad it's good. Yeah. And it's funny because I looked up like I like to look at like letterbox comments and stuff like that. So someone had a review and they put ghost house equals that time. Lindsay overheard someone describing poltergeist while at a screening of house by the cemetery and didn't pay attention to either. But um, Mr. Lindsay decided he show Hooper Spielberg and Fulci who was boss. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, like letterbox has like, like some very great comments. And I think I'm going to stop bringing that, those comments yeah, like, like it. Sit there and just add more humor to it because yeah. It's 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 nuts, but you know, just with this film, like you know, starting off, it just had this fucking stupid ass song that would play, and it would just sit there, and I would just like, what the fuck is this thing saying? It's like, are you there? Are you are you up? Are you there? Are you oh there? my god, are yes. You there? Are you there? <laughs> are you up? Are you there? Are you there? I'm just like, what the fuck? And I guess the film described it as a eerie children's song like what like uh like a lullaby like who yeah. the fuck's putting that kid to sleep with that yeah no that was that was eerie yeah and yeah. Definitely not a lullaby though that is oh <laughs> uh, so i mean there's so much about this film that's just funny and mm -hmm. this i mean like 
I was watching this and I, my immediate thought was we have got to screen this at a movie night. Like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> this has to happen. People will are going to love this. Yeah. Uh, there's a crazy doll, like clown doll, mm-hmm. that is a ripoff of the poltergeist clown. Yep. And it's absolutely hideous. It attacks people at times and it looks so awesomely fake. Yeah. Uh, the little girl who appears with the doll at times and is just like, I don't understand anything about what I watched. Or inflatable light bulbs and shit that just, yes. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Uh, it I, needs I, to be watched, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then, like, we're, we're laughing and joking about this saying it's fucking crazy, but it's crazy and good in, the, in a good way. So bad, it's good. You yeah. Know what I mean? So. Yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun. This is a movie that I would love to. I, I very, like I said, very similar uh, mm-hmm. vibes to when we were doing Deadly Spawn, where it's a film that I could want to watch with a group of people yeah. and that just kind of aren't going to take it too seriously and they're going to have a great time. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about the uh, the hitchhiker, the uh, African gonna, American dude? I was going to sit there and say it to you because I had brought it up. I have a lot of lookalikes that's in this fucking film. And so when I first seen him, I'm just like, what the fuck is Eric Sherman from EPMD doing in this fucking movie? And his <laughs> name, I think his name is Green-Eyed Bandit. Huh? Yeah. The Green-Eyed Bandit. And I think his name was his Pepe or something like that. Yes, Pepe. <laughs> I forgot who was Pepe. <laughs> but it was like. He was so fucking annoying because he got in the car and he's just like starting to do all these stupid things. And then he gets out and he's like, you should believe in, in ghosts. <laughs> you, you, some, I forgot what the fuck like, he called him. He's pranking people he just met. He's like, yeah, and, literally... he, and he took five bucks off or two. <laughs> uh, a classic quote that he says at one point when he's in the car, he just meets these people. He goes, Massachusetts sucks, huh? Yeah. Come to think of it everywhere sucks, huh? Yeah, and he, Wait, has, he had a UMass hat on too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that guy was awesome. But uh, it's, but it's true though. He got in the car, and that 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 quote that he said that you know, mass sucks, but got, everywhere sucks. Because I feel as though that no matter what, like when you when you go somewhere else or another state, someone is not happy where they are where they are. Like you know, what I mean, someone can go to California and say, I hate this fucking place that lives there. But you're yeah. like, oh, this place is great. You know what I mean? Yes. It's the same thing. Like when we come to Rhode Island, some people go, I hate Rhode Island. And someone's, oh, this is great. So, hey, everywhere pay sucks. Pay. Everywhere sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> profound statement he made, actually. I didn't bring it to those layers. I just love it because it was like so random, though. It was like, Massachusetts sucks, huh? Yeah. I, I mean, everything in this movie was random. Yeah. Everything was random. Even like the main character, like the guy, he looked like. Do you remember that show Step by Step? <laughs> he looked like he looked like the older brother JT. <laughs> I'm sitting there just like, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, this look at these fucking lookalikes. I'm like, it's it's yeah. fucking crazy. But you know, like we said earlier about the doll, the doll comes into play like later on in the movie when things start to get explained. Because at first you're, you're like, what the fuck is this doll doing here? But you know. You know, the whole rundown of the story, it was it was weird because I know the guy had like a like a radio. And so he started to he started to hear different things on the radio, like what happened. So he he listened in and then they end up going to this house because they heard like screaming or something. What, what was going on? Tune me in. I don't even know, dude. <laughs> I really don't know. I, I honestly I even said to you when we were going to like record this. Yeah. Uh, like a week ago, I was like, Brandon, I think I need a little bit more time because I honestly don't. This is the weird. This is the weird thing that this movie did to me. Um, mm-hmm. Watch this movie. I actually, I wasn't distracted. No, a day I, later, I literally had no idea. Like, didn't remember. I didn't remember much. I was like, I feel like I almost didn't even watch this movie. I it, nothing was sticking with me except for like mm-hmm. different. Like the plot line didn't stick with me at all. That's why I say I I don't know what I watched because the plot line. It made no sense to me. It didn't stick with me, but the imagery yeah. stuck with me. Like the the doll, the girl popping up, the, yeah. the you know, like you said, the light bulb, like that stuff really stuck with me. I mean, honestly, I felt like I didn't even really watch a plot. I just watched scenes glued together. Yeah. And that was the same thing for me. I had to watch. I had watched it probably like three times. It was like the first time I watched it, I ended up falling asleep. I work yeah. overnight, so sometimes it's like it's hard for me to kind of get into movies. 
on certain nights and then the second time it was around the same thing but then the third time i just watched through it i'm just like what the fuck is going on so um yeah i think that's what happened it was like the rv like the the radio kind of they heard screaming they went to this crazy house to kind of like check and see what was going on they get there there's a brother and sister there and they play back the record and he's like oh that's me because it was yes I, oh yeah yeah so yeah he's they go into the attic and they find this yeah. equipment there and then a dude pops up he's like what are you like he's like why would you be there nobody should yeah. even be there and then they're like oh come down here and check this out and like suddenly they're like you know all investigating together it's yeah yes yeah, very nuts. very bizarre and his his sister actually was like a young Jim Carrey from In Living Color. <laughs> so, like like I said, this movie has a whole bunch of fucking lookalikes in this fucking film, you know. And then she was in the RV and it starts shaking everywhere. Oh, and- yeah, it's it's like the only thing I could think of is like the you know what everybody always will say is like when the RV is rocking, don't come and knock. And so yeah. they're, they're like, it, but it's shaking so like crazily it's like what the fuck is happening uh another thing but one thing this film does really well is like its use of the house as for like the gags yeah like, the light bulb ceiling fan blades like it does a decent job of like finding household items yeah. to turn into like you know evil things um yeah. I, I like that it, it yeah, definitely it uses the house yeah also with the attic and the basement they definitely you know mm-hmm. worked really well because they like, you know sometimes some when people film like movies and shit they just use the outside of the house and I, you can tell that they used like everything that they could in this movie with yeah. that house but um yeah like it's hard to kind of like give this re- this review like a straight face like staying on everything staying on track but it's just you got to jump around because that's like things that kind of like stood out to us you know and then like you had the guy that like guarded the house and everything like that like the fight scenes the headlocks and everything and i'm just like what the fuck is going on oh the biggest thing actually i i totally neglected this part the opening scene is is bizarre yeah that is uh sets the tone for the little girl that you're gonna see and i won't like spoil it Mm -hmm. but there's a there's a quick kill in the very beginning that like you're like oh yeah i know what i'm getting into and i like from there it's just it's just non-stop bonkers um well it yeah. takes a little break oh, no. it takes a little break from that and then it gets a little crazy because i, I remember like the the washing machine the dryer scene or was it the washer and that was a that was a cool scene mm-hmm. with the head yeah. but yes you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah pick back up a little bit yeah. But yeah, it was just, there was a lot of great things um, in this film. So I would definitely check it out. You know, I like, we can, I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to give away the rest of it because I think that people should kind of like just go into yeah. this film. No, like, I, I think that it, it's best to just say this movie's crazy. Yeah. There's a lot of things, a lot of visual gags that you're going to love. If you love like cheesy eighties horror with, you know, De- where they clearly like put more effort into the special effects and the practical effects than they put into anything else mm-hmm. then you're gonna love this uh this is this kind of stuff that we absolutely adore where it's like a film that doesn't take itself seriously uh yeah. and, you know is just i don't know you don't have to think too much when you're watching it so this is definitely one for people to to watch and um you know again shout out to uh to Josh Gravel uh, for recommending this. I this has been on my list. I don't know, Brandon, if you'd had you heard of this film before. I've seen the cover before, but I like I never. I just always just kind of like passed it by. So yeah, because it was like the same thing. I knew I heard something about it before that it shared like the same house as the House on the Cemetery, but it never like grabbed my attention to kind of want to check out but hey i'm glad i did check it out because it's something i missed and it's a definitely a film that i recommend to people now you know yeah. because it's not bad it had like a runtime of 95 minutes you know i know but yeah so you know it's yeah, I, it had always been on my list and i just never got to it because i didn't i i kind of like thought it was like a more serious film or something like that yeah. 
it's I always pass it over. But when he told me that this was, he said, you're, it makes zero sense and you're going to love it. I was like, all right, let's give it a shot. So yeah. I think we're at that point in our lives, you know what I mean? Like after the pandemic, it was just like, all right, we're, we're down to give anything a chance. Yes. Now. Yeah. Like, in that time of Tubi and it's like, hey, you're not paying for it. So it is what it is. It's a good time. Brandon, so, was there a follow up to this film? Uh, I think there was supposed to be, but I don't know if it's actually a real follow up because it was saying something about like uh, Go- Ghost Hells, La Casa 4. But I don't know. They hmm. will we'll see. I don't know. Like, it, they had enough money success. I guess they, they came to their goal with kind of labeling it as like an Evil Dead 3 that they made enough money. Or a sequel, so I'm not sure if they actually did make one, but I heard they did, and it's called Evil Dead Rise. We're gonna see it <laughs> next turn. That is Ghost House Two, aka La Casa Four, aka Evil Dead Rise. There you go. Uh yeah. all right. Anything else about Ghost House? It's it's a great movie, and if you don't believe in ghosts, in the words of Pepe, you're a pinhead. <laughs> and that's true. It sucks. <laughs> pay pay, <laughs> pay, pay. Uh, where did they come up with pay pay i don't know oh my uh, gosh I that I we came from anyway. <laughs> no no why he was even in the movie well, wait a minute do- i don't want to i i i want to give it away but pay pay dies yeah. and it sucks because they should have had that on an on-screen kill like oh yeah he wasn't on screen was screen kill that's what pissed me off. You have the most annoying character die off screen. And it's like, I don't know. How can you he, drop the ball on that? Yeah, yeah, he's I know. His own fucking origin story of like how he got in mass. <laughs> he was wearing, he was eating a candy bar at one point. I think so. I don't he know. at one point comes off as um like the friday the 13th type character yeah. was it Do- like dominic who's always eating the candy bar yeah. or just like the ones like just doing the pranks uh yeah. he he was like a culmination of all the annoying friday the 13th characters i could see that and then yeah. like even like with the girl from friday the 13th that was a hitchhiker and they, they uh. rode her and they she gave it the finger so hey maybe, maybe they were kind of riding that wave maybe I think you're on to something. <laughs> the origins of Pepe. <laughs> that right a there. Full is we, feature. <laughs> we need, yeah, we need to, to definitely research this. The origins of Pepe. <laughs> That's, That's its film name. La Casa 4. The origins of Pepe. <laughs> of Pepe. <laughs> I'll, like, if they want to um, create this movie, I'll be Pepe in that movie. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I'll fund that. I would get a loan. Just give you a UMass hat and a little <laughs> fake little fucking hand. <laughs> That'll be great. Get a GoFundMe. Fucking Indiegogo. <laughs> Please help me make Pepe's dreams real. Why not? They they stole Evil Dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> steal fucking that movie. Ghost House fucking. Oh my god. <laughs> Mix it up, ghost house, ghost dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so yeah, definitely check it out. Check so, out, yeah, ghost it, house. that that's definitely on our one of our top films, yes, that I've seen so far. Um, the next film, um, is The Platform, is that is now streaming on Netflix. It was recommended by Sean Dryer. So um, if I screwed your name up, I'm sorry, but me and Dave are kind of going back and forth. Um, but we learned right. on Drywa. I think that's, I think Looks it safe. is. Looks yeah. safe. Sean.drywa on Instagram, D-R-Y-W-A. Yeah. We appreciate the recommendation and we appreciate all the support over the years um, with the Vortex Film Festival and everything like that. So it's like when we... When I first heard of this film, it was on Netflix. I have given I have given Netflix like a break over the years because it's not my go-to for horror films or anything anymore. Uh, 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 so this is a 2019 Spanish film. Um, and it's set like in a large tower style 
um, management center. It's residents who are switched every month between its many floors are fed via platform, which you know is filled with food that rises from the top to the bottom. And it all depends on, it's just a crazy twist, but you know, when you, when you sent me like the film that was recommended, I looked at the trailer right away in this and it reminded me of Gordon Ramsay's, like one of his newest shows is called next level chef. And so when I had seen that, it has like the same, like uh, the same platform thing, but it has like three levels, like the top floor is for like the mo- like the fancy restaurants. And so the, the team that's upstairs gets to grab all the best meat first, and then they have a time limit, and then it goes down to the second level, which is like a medium okay restaurant, say like a Chili's or something like that. And then that's where they can kind of like grab their meat, and they have to sit there and make a, like a great dish out of it to win. And then when it, same thing, the time runs out, it goes down to the bottom level, which is the basement, which they're left with the scraps to try to create a meal like you know what i mean so it's like so say like some of the some of the meat that people want to want from like in high-end restaurants so you have to show your skills and it i'm and i've been watching this show for like a couple weeks now and so i was just like wait a minute i gotta fucking watch this movie because it it, it's giving me that vibe and i watched it when i watched the film like yes this is the vibe and i'm not i'm I'm not sure if uh, gordon ramsay stole idea from this this movie platform i mean from what you're describing it's it sounds exactly the same premise yeah so it's it's just been crazy (laughs) is um you know when it first starts off we have the main character he's in he's it's the same it's like a platform like you know i mean like you you could see it they have roommates It, it was just odd it was just like they don't know why they're like some like each person doesn't know why they're there no, I mean, like the roommate doesn't know. What and, what did you think of when they like first wake up? What it, did it remind you of anything? Kind of like Saw. Yeah, it's the exact thought I had when I yeah. watched that and I saw them wake up. I was like, and they're in a strange place. It felt like you were in Saw and you had to figure out kind of like why you were there. Or what, were your, what was your purpose? Yeah. So, yeah, that, I think that was like a, a, like a cool, cool little setup they had. This is uh, 94 minutes runtime. I think it premiered at the like the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival, where it won the People's Choice Award at the Midnight Madness. You know, and at that point in time, um, they secured a streaming deal with Netflix, and then it was released on the streaming service in March 20th, March 20th, 2020. So, I don't know. I don't. I like. This is the first time. Like that, I was I showed interest in it because I'm like, like I said, I gave Netflix a break for a while. I don't. It's not my go-to for horror. It's more like comedy stuff mm-hmm. like that, like stand-ups and shit like that. But I'm glad. I'm glad I checked this out. What did you think about it? I enjoyed it quite a bit. And ironically, uh, so I was at my family's house for Easter, and my mm-hmm. brother-in-law was like, "I just watched this crazy movie, The Platform." I was like. I have to watch the platform for my podcast. And yeah. he's like, oh, just wait. It's nuts. And he described it. And I was like, all right, cool. So I went home and I wasn't like super excited about the film. I He made yeah. it sound interesting. I watched it and I was like, this is really cool. Um, yeah. But also like there is a deeper meaning. And I was like, trying, I was like, I mean, it's pretty obvious most of it, but like, in the end, it even co- becomes more clear, and I'm not going to give away the end because that's actually important to like get the full message. I think of the film, yeah. um, but this idea of the top getting the first dibs at all the food, and yeah, you're supposed to basically eat. You're not supposed to. They don't tell you you have to. He so yeah. our main character gets uh, pretty much like schooled on what's going to happen by his, like each floor is two people and he's paired up with this older guy and the older guy is basically like telling him the ropes and the older guy's super freaking annoying. And he like has this, he always says, obviously like, uh, that's my word. (laughs) Yeah. That's I And so he, yeah, when he says saying it back to him, he goes, don't ever use my word. Um, (laughs) but you, you learn that they each got to take one item of their choice with them. So our main character brought the book 
Don Quixote because he wanted to read Don Quixote. And um, that was his one item. His his platform mate was brought a carving knife. Yeah. You know, we kind of realized Not just any regular carving knife. Oh, it was a pretty badass carving knife. The del- but he got upset because, you know, a couple of weeks later, oh. it was like on an infomercial. You know how they market everything like this is yeah. the best cutting knife of the world on the market. Da, 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 da. The more was- I cut it, the harder, the sharper it gets. The more yeah. I cut with it. And he got upset because I think there was a deluxe knife drop <laughs> the next couple of weeks, a month or two. So yeah. which is the main thing about this story is just like just living in your means and kind of just loving what you have because it's never enough you know what i mean and that's the thing because like you like i like i talk about tvs and stuff like that like you know we can get this tv and they're like oh man but i want a bigger tv and i want this tv and this t- this tv has to have this bells and whistles and everything like that and that's that's what this this story is about you know and um trying to move towards like being fair and with the wealth and stuff like that so yeah um, so it's because you like you you vary what floor you're going to be on. Was it a week on each floor? Was that the amount of, the duration of time? I think so. I think so. And like one day you could be I on think it was a month. A month. All right. Maybe. So so they're on like a set duration of time on each floor, and mm-hmm. there's over what over 250 floors. I forget exactly what the number is. We, I'm not even gonna say because I I don't know if yeah, you really different. Learn right? that. Um, there's a ton of floors, and. Um, you wake up and one day you could be on 47 the next you could be at three the next you could be at 150 like you don't know where and there's no rhyme or reason to what floor you're gonna it's not like you pass or fail it's just about survival but like when you're the people on the top floors when that food's presented there's no right or wrong answer like they can eat just a little bit they could eat as much as they want but what they end up doing is they all gorge and by the time the food gets to like floor a hundred, it's pretty much done. It's so gone. there's, and there's so many people still below that get zero amount of food, mm-hmm. which is so like, yeah, it just kind of shows how like, as, as society gets wealthier, like the wealthy get wealthier, mm-hmm. poor get poorer. And like they, you know, we just, we just really do live in a society where like, there's no, equal amounts for anybody it's like the the, the mm-hmm. everything always goes to the wealthy and that's kind of what this film really represents so our main character is that kind of uh martyrish type of character who's like you know he's willing to sacrifice everything just to kind of be able to feed everybody yeah and you know at the end of the film like this this the story has a, a huge message and you know everything's wrapped in i think they wrapped up the film in like in a great way you know what i mean because it, it could have gone either way but i think that they did a great job with the storytelling in this film yeah. but I, I need to know dave if you were to go what would your one item be <laughs> what would be my, my one item i mean i would have brought a, i would have brought a weapon for sure no without knowing you were going to go through this what would you bring oh my god I literally bring, oh, I would bring like some form of music. Yeah. I would either bring some form of music or I, I probably would be the guy who brought a book, to be honest yeah, with you. Right. Like, I, I go on an airplane and I bring a book. Like, I'm yeah. all, I walk, anytime I'm going to go away, I bring a book. Yeah. In music. Yeah. See? You? I would have brought my iPad <laughs> or the laptop. But that's the thing, like going into it, not knowing what you're getting ready to go into, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I would have my laptop or something or iPad watch movie, but it would, I don't know. It would have sucked because the shit would have died. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. If you don't have a charger then you're kind of screwed. Give me, I, I want my uh, iPad and a couple fucking little outlet bricks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a juice pack. Yeah. The uh, juice packs. Get them going. Yeah. But, there, there's so many like messages within the story. And I think, um, the way it's told like captures your attention throughout. This is not one like ghost house is like silly. This is definitely more serious. Um, There's, there's like humorous moments in the film for sure. And there's like some stuff that's just like so bizarre um, that it's kind of humorous, but it's not like, 
funny. It's actually, and it's, it's so here's like the thing, like what we, anything we've described so far, doesn't sound horrorish. It's definitely yeah. to me. Like there, oh, yeah, there's yeah. so much, it's disgusting at times. There's mm-hmm. like a lot of bodily function stuff going on at times. There's, yeah. I don't know if I should say the next thing that there's like, I'm, you can imagine what happens if you haven't been eating for a period of time and you're, have someone else on your platform we'll just put it that way yeah. like like your imagination do what it will um and then there's a lot of violence and stuff like that because people get angry you know it's like it, oh so it was like saw mixed with um i i don't know why i got like that office what's that office movie where everybody gets angry and like starts to like oh uh, with uh the guy from the walking dead even yen yeah i forget it's like kind of remind me of that or there was another one where it was more like it wasn't the one with Steve, with that guy from the walking dead it was there was another one i can't remember the name but it had a lot of violence to it it kind of remind me of something like that um yeah. tone wise but then it had a very foreign feeling to it as well because it is a spanish film and um yeah. it's it almost parts of it almost felt like dream-esque like he was i thought he was going to wake up for at some point um in the beginning yeah. and i realized no this is real um we also found that he was there voluntarily i don't think that's too much of a spoiler i think you learned that yeah i think a lot of people were there for different reasons and yeah. so with his reason like you said yeah he kind of wanted to go there but yeah it's like you know it, it's it's definitely an eye-opener you know what, what's going on in the world um it's it was a great film, you know. And mm-hmm. let's see, what else can I really add on to this? Well, I one thing I just wanted to say is like I I think that the message, I like I don't want people to think like oh because like I know how people get all like in their feelings when you, something comes off as like socialism. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I don't think the message is about socialism per se. I think it is literally about greed and wealth. Yeah, like taking caring about each other and mm-hmm. watching out for each other. I don't think it's like socialism where he's saying like everybody should have equal amounts. I don't think that's the message of the film, even if it was, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that's how you have to interpret it. Uh, yeah. I just want to say that. Cause I think when I described it, I don't know if it came off that way. Yeah. I think, I think when you, when you watch, when someone watched the ending of the film, you know what I mean? Like how they go down. Yeah. Different levels of the floors, you know, they'll, they'll realize and put pieces together. So, um, yeah, and like you were saying, it, it felt like a dream. I think that he was dreaming. So every time he was sleeping, it would kind of go back to like when he was outside, like, you know, what I mean? when he was yeah. back in the community, mm-hmm. everything and kind of like leading up to why he's there. So yeah. and then when he would wake up, sometimes it would be on a different level. So I think that was it was cool. They did a great job with that. Um, I, I mean, I would actually be interested in watching another version of this film with like different yeah. character stories you know what Lindsay, <laughs> Lindsay, get on there make la casa five <laughs> the tower <laughs> you know what i mean starring then, pepe with different ghosts on different floors <laughs> and everything like that hey fuck it you want to stay we can stay on films and we can take we can take a crazy ass fucking film <laughs> Each level meets killer ghost clown, man. and then your next floor <laughs> you're in there with ghosts. <laughs> yeah. all... <laughs> down I'm, I'm down for it. That sounds like a good film. Um, yeah. So both films to me, they they were yeah spot on. Um, I'm I'm, I'm gonna go as far as to say is, um, this round of films. Yeah, I think it even topped our last round of films. And I loved our last round of films. I did. I did. But I would still... Eh. Ghost House and... Yeah, I know. It's a tough one. Deadly yeah. Ghost House and Deadly Spawn are definitely... That's in... where I'm at with it, right there. Those yeah, two. yeah. But um, this, this one is definitely a film to check out. It's yeah. wacky. It's bizarre enough that it like definitely fit what we're going for with this with this episode yeah. uh but it's it's well enough that i think a lot of people will enjoy it other than just typical horror fans yeah it, definitely two good recommendations because it's like i think you get you, like you said it was like pretty even you we, we got you got what you needed you got crazy funniness bullshit 
and then you got serious <laughs> serious shit with like a great story. <laughs> you know, it, it even though <laughs> that should be the tagline for Ghost House. Crazy funniest bullshit. <laughs> if you don't like ghosts, if you don't if you don't believe in ghosts, you're a pinhead. From the words of Pay Pay. But yeah, so uh Yeah. Yeah. I can't say anything else about these films. No, I no. them. Thank you to uh Josh Gravel, uh, Weird Media Records on Instagram, and to Sean Drywa, Sean.Drywa on Instagram as well. Um, these were awesome recommendations. We loved them. And this was a perfect episode, to, in my opinion, as far as like two great films to enjoy, very different from each other, and to be able to talk about. So, yeah, I am feeling on a high with this episode and like how these, ep- how the picks have been going for these episodes. So I am really, really looking forward to next month. So let's see who can top it. I want to know. I want to see if someone else can put together a perfect episode just like this. Yeah. Yeah. Something nuts and something kind of serious, but also nuts. Let's let's see you guys do it. Let's here's your challenge. Challenge. Or you're going to be in the tower (laughs) for 30 days with no food. Watching them stuck with Pei Pei. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, how hard was it though? You know, not to keep this going on for too long, just longer, but how hard was it to watch that guy eating the like when the first time you see him eating like the, the already chewed up and like leftover yeah. that was freaking disgusting. Yeah. That's hard to watch. Oh, not to mention the people on the level above you are probably spitting or pissing on your food just or to shitting. or shitting just to give you a hard time because they're above you yep. and they're like oh well the floor above us probably did it to our food what mm-hmm. and you gotta <laughs> deal with it it's so you happens. know this and you're gonna eat it and then you're gonna pee on the people below you know that's a lot of pee or poop it's, it's life it's life <laughs> it's life life, life. Oh, Someone's always peeing in your Cheerios, isn't that the say the saying? When someone's above you, they feel like they're better than you. And then when they moved on to that lower level, then they start to realize shit. It is what it is. It's life. Hey, I thought they did a great no, job with you, the- What you just said right there is is exactly it. Um, yeah. the pecking order, the hierarchy of of society at all forms. I don't care if you're an adult, children at school do it. When the yep. bull- kids bully other kids, um, mm-hmm. it's it's just like that's the way humans function. We always look for a tier below us to kind of put yeah. down ourselves, feel feel better. It sucks that we do that, but we definitely do. Yeah, that's you know that's and that's the thing in life. You know, I, I was always taught to kind of just treat everyone equal. You know, what I mean, like even at my job, you know, what I mean, like you see the uh housekeepers and everything that have to do is shitty jobs you treat them just like humans you know what i mean i talk with them joke with them you know what i mean it is what it is life you, you treat people it's not just because you're above somebody because then like the person that's above you they can talk to you that type of way you know what i mean like i just want that same res- i give everybody else the same respect you know because I mean? you never know when one day they're going to be above you <laughs> in that yeah, exactly position. yeah and how they're going to treat you then so yep life lessons here on pvd or you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to seeing what your next picks are going to be. You've got to top these films, man. Throw some good films out there. But yeah. I appreciate yeah. all the engagement. Keep it coming. We, we love the support. Keep listening. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. What the fuck did we just watch? <laughs> Tune in next time. All right. Take it easy. Yeah.